In this video, what I'm going to show you how to do is connect an amplifier to an impedance matching volume control and then to a pair of speakers, or in this case, a dual voice coil speaker, which is just like a pair of speakers. Let's get started. Now in order to complete this, you're going to need a few basic things. Of course, you're going to need an amplifier. Now this amplifier is specifically designed to power impedance matching volume controls and a speaker. Now, if you have a receiver, you want to check to see if the receiver is stable and supports impedance matching volume controls at 8 ohms, because that's the configuration I'm showing you in this video. You can usually look at the back label on the back of your receiver. It'll tell you what it's stable to ohms wise. Check with the manufacturer spec on your volume control because not every volume control is an impedance matching volume control. And then check to make sure your speaker is an 8 ohm speaker or if you have a speaker pair, both speakers are 8 ohm speakers. You also will need speaker wire run from the back of the amplifier to your impedance matching volume control and then from your impedance matching volume control to the back of your speaker. For illustration purposes I'm choosing to use a 16 gauge two conductor wire. One is for the left channel on the speaker or speaker pair. One is for the right channel on the speaker or the speaker pair. Now I mentioned that I'm using one speaker. It actually has two channels built in Hence, on your screen, you see a total of four binding posts. One pair of binding posts for the left channel, one pair for the right channel. So this is a true stereo speaker just built into one cabinet. The other thing you're going to need is a basic wire stripping tool like we have pictured here, and then a small screwdriver to attach your wires to these special wire clips that come with the volume control. Now, if you're going to install more than one pair, let me back up and re-say that. Regardless of the number of pairs of speakers that you're going to wire in your configuration, you're going to want to make sure that you reference the manufacturer's installation sheet so that you set your jumpers correctly. If you do not perform this step correctly, you're going to ruin all your equipment, basically. Okay, so make sure you look at the manufacturer cut sheet for the exact volume controls that you're using and I recommend you use the same volume controls in all your speakers. So one volume control per pair of speakers. Let's get started on connecting these wires. So the first thing I did was I flipped my amplifier around to the back side. Now this particular amplifier has two sets of speaker binding posts. I just went ahead and selected set A on the top and because I'm installing a pair of speakers, I have two pair of speaker wires. I have my left and my right. So red to red, black to black, black to black, red to red, just like that. We want to make sure we match the polarity on the speaker wires on both ends. So this red needs to land on the right channel red on the volume control. Let's take a look at that now. So what I'm holding in my hand is the wiring clip that comes with the manufacturer's volume control. It makes connecting the wires a little easier. The first wire I connected is the right channel red positive wire. While you can't see it on your screen, or possibly can't see it on your screen, the wire harness is actually labeled. So I just looked for the input harness, which is what I have, and the right positive, and made my connection using that small flathead screwdriver. I'm going to make the rest of my connections now. So I finished making the wiring connections to the wire harness. I probably should have cut the copper back a little shorter so it's not exposed. That would help reduce the risk of any shorts or oxidation in the future. But for illustration purposes, I think this is okay. Now I'm going to make the wiring connections coming out of the volume control and I'll show you how we make those connections to the volume control. But before I make those connections, I went ahead and cut my copper back really short, as you can see on the tip of my finger here. Just want to make sure that it seats in there and it's not exposed. Now I'm holding the volume control in my hands. While you maybe can't read it on your screen, right here on this printed circuit board, it says output. And if I flip it over, 
it says input. So I'm going to take the wire from the amplifier and use that harness and plug it in right here. Now I have both the input wire and the output wire plugged into the correct slot and with this particular volume control there's only one way that you can plug in each harness. It only fits one way. But as you can tell, if you are going to push this volume control into a single gang electrical box without cutting the back off, that wire could get pretty jammed up in here. And this volume control is actually going to generate heat as well as it's doing its impedance matching thing. Now let's look at hooking up the speaker. So I went ahead and made my wiring connections from the back of the volume control to the speaker. Now keep in mind, if the speaker is in front of you when you're listening to it, the right is the right and the left is the left. However, if the speaker is behind you, the left becomes the right, the right becomes the left. So take into account how you wire the back. If the speaker is behind you, then the right channel is this one, and if it's in front of you, the right channel is this one. Just think it through, it's fairly straightforward. The only other thing you have to do on the back of your volume control is set the jumper settings based on what the manufacturer installation sheet tells you. If you don't do this correctly, you're going to ruin your equipment. So the jumper settings are on that circuit board at the bottom of, of uh, the volume control toward the bottom of your screen. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Please share this video with anybody you know who likes this kind of stuff. Visit our website. We've got a hundred of hundreds of really exciting articles on everything about home electronics. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.